In this video, I want to give you the tips and tricks on how to utilize Command and the new DocuSign integration. This is based on all the feedback, questions I've seen online, and I just want to give you the best process to follow that will eliminate a lot of the errors and messages I'm hearing out there. So everything starts with an opportunity in command. So I'm in command here in an opportunity, and I'm in the documents, and this is the best way to start a transaction. If you do go to DocuSign directly, it is not going to link it correctly into command, and that's going to cause a lot of the issues. So that's really the first tip. Always start inside of command, inside an opportunity, in the documents tab, and you always want to click start a transaction. Now I have a choice between DocuSign and DotLoop. You should just have DocuSign, or if you were to use DotLoop, the process will be the same. It has to be originated here for this all to work. So here I am, documents, it now says go to transaction. This is how I'm going to get in and in DocuSign's world, they're gonna create a room of all those documents. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my account. There you go, I'm logging into DocuSign. Now you may not see the multiple room choices there. So I'm in the room and here's the name of the room and you'll see it matches command. So that's the first big tip. Now the next thing I notice people tend to do is they come right up top and start adding a document. Stop, first step in here is to always start with details. So you're gonna come over to details first because you need to make sure you enter the details in of the seller and mainly around the address because this is causing some errors as well. Now we know right now it doesn't automatically come from command and we are working on fixing that. So for now, we would just come here and edit. So for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and put in an address so that we can go ahead and get this to work. Boulevard, unit two. So you would just fill in your information. Okay, and this is really where the issue comes in. If you go to the contract and write it in first, then it's not gonna work correctly here. So I'm gonna put in my information and I've got all that there. On the right hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and add my seller one and seller two. Now this is very important. Let's say it's Mickey Mouse and email address is Mickey at Disney.com. If you do not do this part, when you get to the contracts, it won't be able to find the contact itself. So I've got all that in there. I'll say, let's say it's Minnie Mouse and email address as seller two at Disney.com. And then I would have myself in as listing agent if that is me. We know this is a little time consuming right now and we're gonna fix this so that it auto populates. So for now, just type in the information. Um, I did learn if you fill in the company name and information here, it will actually show up inside the contract as well. So I'll go ahead and put in those address things there. Okay, if I was done with this, I would click save. So that was step one, filling in the details. Then you're gonna to come to documents and add the document so that it fills it in. So I'm gonna come here to add from DocuSign. This is gonna give me some choices. So my market center has created a group for me and I'm gonna to go to, let's say the listing packet and I'm gonna find all the forms I need for a listing. So for this example, I'm just gonna pick one and I have all these different options. Let's say I want a seller's disclosure as well and I'm going to add them. So really in here, step one is adding your details. Step two is for documents. You're gonna come here. Now I've got my documents. The way this works is you fill out the form first then you're gonna to get to an envelope, which will be where the signatures are. So this is me clicking on the name of the file here. It's going to open up the data entry portion of it. So DocuSign wants you to enter the details of this contract. You will notice some of that stuff came over from the details tab I just did, and some of it I still need to map in. We are working on getting this fixed as well. So I've got Mickey Mouse, I'll say Minnie Mouse. I will go ahead and put in today's date, let's say. 10, 2019 and expiration. So you would fill out your contract like normal. I'll say 02, 10, 2020. You would fill out the details like you need. Notice there's no signatures though. This is just data entry. So fill it all out. Make sure this contract is all filled in the way you need it to. And then when you're done with this, you would hit save and close. So you fill that out first. Then you're gonna come over here and do the actual next section. So I'm saving this. I would fill out the other form if I need to. And when I'm ready, you highlight this to unlock your toolbar. This is where you get it ready to then do the DocuSign right there. That's the best practice. So if I click DocuSign, what they do is they package it together in a digital envelope. I have to label the envelope and put it all together. 
and then it will give you to the section of filling out the documents and uh, doing the signature boxes, adding any fields that you need. So here you would give it an envelope name. I'll say 123 Main Street because we're just testing this. Here are my forms. And this is the most critical. If you want the signature boxes to auto-populate, you have to come here and choose pre-tagged roles. If you do not do this, then you have to add every signature box inside every contract. So the best practice is always use pre-tagged roles. And if you come here and notice it doesn't have your people, it's because you didn't do it under details to add Mickey and Minnie or whoever your seller is, buyers are. So I'll say Mickey Mouse is seller one. I'll say Minnie Mouse is seller two. There's the email address and I am the listing associate. So I will be here. So that's the people I'd be adding. And you're going to notice it's going to have us as one, two, or one, 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 right? We'll all be here though. And right now, if I sent it the way it is, all of us will get it at the same time. If you want it to go in order, like I want Mickey to sign first, then once he's signed, please send it to Minnie. And then once they both have signed, then send it to the listing agent. You can just change this to give it a order number and that will force it to go in order so no one can sign it until it's their turn. And if you do it this way, they will see that it's been signed or filled out or whatever it's needed before they do the signing. So that's another big important key. Put in your message down below. Always use a message because the DocuSign email is kind of generic. And if you don't put a message here about what they're signing, what they need to do, it, it may be a little too vague for the consumer. So I might just say, please review and sign the listing paperwork. Call me if you need me, right? Call me if you need anything, comma J. That will show my message. When I click next, this isn't sending it yet. This is how you're gonna get to the actual DocuSign form, fill it all out and add the signature boxes. So this will have the signature boxes already there for me because I chose the pre-tagged roles. So doing it this way will make sure that you eliminate 90% of the comments I'm seeing on Facebook of when it says there's no signatures here and everything's missing. It's because you didn't have the assigned role. So the cool thing is on the left, here are all the assigned roles and it color codes everybody. So I see Mickey is yellow, Minnie is blue, and I am the listing agent, I am purple. So I can see it automatically added all these. And on the left, if I needed to add anything, let's say for Minnie, it'll have all the fields I need for her to drop in an initial box if I need to, or delete it, or add a text box, or drop their name somewhere. It will fill that in for them. And that's really some of the best practices I've seen there. So you would make sure all the signature boxes are where they need to. I see right here, I am missing a signature for me, so I would add that box here. Again, we are working with DocuSign to get a lot of these state forms and things filled. If you do add a signature, just so you know, the best practice, add this little field for date signed. There will be a digital stamp and a separate document, but if you want the date and time on the contract to be visible to the other parties, add that date signed, whether you're doing an initial or a signature. And best practices here, um, make sure that these boxes, the line is on the line, and when it does the signature, it will line up perfectly. So that's some of the stuff that you can do. Another thing people always ask about, and it's hard to see here, so let me move this window. Um, what if I need to cross something out? There are some markup tools here. So if you needed to cross anything out, you can do that, add some initials, whatever you need. And on the right-hand side is all the different uh, fields of stuff that you can do if you need to. So there's different tools here. There's different custom fields and then standard fields of adding and dragging in. Once you're all done, then you hit send and it will send it to those people. So that's really some of the best practices that I've experienced now with both teaching this, using the system, and all the comments I'm seeing on Facebook. So I hope this helps give some clarity around best practices right now with DocuSign. If there's things that you want to make sure we add to this video, or if there's separate tricks and tips you want to share with me, feel free to reach out. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, follow me on KB Connect or YouTube today.